So what do these symbols on the last page of my playbill mean, and why are they so important? My name is Kent, and this is your Half Hour Call. Attention cast and crew, this is your Half Hour Call. Half hour to the top of the show. Half hour, please. Hello friends, and welcome back to another very special episode of Half Hour Call. My set may be decorated for Halloween, but today we celebrate a much more important holiday, Labor Day. Per the U.S. Department of Labor, Labor Day is a creation of the labor movement and is dedicated to the social and economic achievements of American workers. It constitutes a yearly national tribute to the contributions workers have made to the strength, prosperity, and well-being of our country. And of course, the backbone of the labor movement are labor unions. Labor unions have had a pivotal role in shaping the American workforce, and I guarantee you that unions have positively impacted you if you've ever worked a day in your life, whether you're a union member or not. And before we go any further, make sure you show some solidarity by smashing that like button, and if you have not already done so, go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell. Unions have had a long history that actually predates the formation of the United States of America. According to the American Federation of Labor, the first strike on U.S. soil occurred in Jamestown in 1619 and was staged by Polish workers and artisans. It should absolutely not be ignored that the first year that American workers fought for fair working conditions was also the first year that enslaved Africans were forcibly brought to American soil and would inevitably endure conditions much worse than Polish artisans would ever experience. What we now consider the labor movement itself actually started during the economic aftermath of the Industrial Revolution. Producing goods in factories, as well as other technological advancements, led to an exponential growth in productivity and profits, but these profits were not passed on to the workers. Nope, in true trickle-down economics form, business owners were the only ones who saw any benefit from this increased productivity. In fact, their desire to increase profits led to pretty terrible working conditions. Low wages, long hours, child labor, and no days off were incredibly common. In fact, workers of all ages could expect to work an average of 100 hours a week. Enter unions. Fed up with poor working conditions and watching the rich get richer, workers united in solidarity and formed labor unions. If you've ever watched Newsies or Billy Elliot, you probably have a pretty solid understanding of what this entails. These unions went on strike to demand fair wages, safe working conditions, and sustainable schedules. It's important to note that, unfortunately, the early days of the labor movement focused heavily on so-called skilled labor, and during this time, women and people of color were largely restricted to positions deemed unskilled. Eventually, the demands in the labor movement caught on and resulted in the Fair Labor Standards Act passed in 1938. This act established things like weekends off, 40-hour work weeks, 8-hour work days, minimum wage, and overtime pay. Since then, unions have fought for and had legislation passed to reduce discrimination based on race, gender, or sexual orientation. Unions got full-time employees access to health care and retirement benefits, and the work of labor unions resulted in the Occupational Safety and Health Act and workers' compensation. The point is, corporations and businesses are always looking for ways to increase the amount of money a worker makes them, while at the same time not increasing the amount of money a worker costs them. Unions were formed as a direct result against this injustice and continue to fight against it to this day. Specifically in theater, the 1910s saw the bulk of our organization as an industry. Prior to the formation of theatrical unions, exploitation of artists was as common as theater itself. Rehearsal time was unlimited and unpaid, workplace safety regulations were virtually non-existent, and sometimes producers and theater owners would just disappear and refuse to pay people. The National Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees, later the International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees, or IATSE, formed in 1910 and is the union of technicians for theater, film, and events. The Dramatists Guild formed in 1911 and became the bargaining group for playwrights. And Actors' Equity Association, the union of professional stage managers and actors in the United States, formed in 1913 and included stage managers officially in 1920. Even if you can't tell from the name of the union. 
Fast forward to today, and Actors' Equity Association is 51,000 members strong. We have established bonding systems to make sure that artists get paid, health and pension funds, living wages, eight shows a week, safe and sanitary working conditions, and so many other protections that are vital to our work as theatrical professionals. To fully understand the scope with which Equity protects its members, I've included links in the description below to the League of Resident Theaters Agreement, also known as the LORT Agreement. I highly recommend reading it, but as you read, consider that every single item in that agreement and every equity agreement is in there because at some point producers did not do the thing. Whether it's providing furniture and actor housing, transportation home at the end of a national tour, or even clean water in rehearsal and performance venues, the reason they had to be included is because someone somewhere at some point did not provide it. And unfortunately, unlike most of the early labor movement's demands, a large portion of equity protections have not been made into law. Or producers will get around labor laws governing employer-employee relationships by illegally misclassifying stage managers and actors as independent contractors instead of fully-fledged employees. I've worked on non-equity projects that did not provide sufficient meal breaks, had no days off, and didn't provide overtime. And when you're an independent contractor, there's no such thing as health insurance or workers' compensation. And you have less legal recourse if your employer just suddenly decides to not pay you. But for the last several years, union membership in every industry across the country has been on the decline. The further away we get from that initial labor movement, the easier it is to fall into the trap of complacency. Additionally, legislation has been passed in many states that significantly weakens the power of unions to defend fair working conditions. These are often passed under the guise of being pro-worker, hence the chipper title of right-to-work states. But as you can see, the only people that union-busting laws like right-to-work help are the already wealthy business owners. And that fact is crucial to remember, now more than ever. I'm anticipating in the next few months, a lot of places and a lot of theaters are going to be scrambling to reopen as soon as possible. And it's going to be extremely tempting to take whatever opportunity you can find. But this great pause that the live entertainment industry has been in since March is a hopefully once in a lifetime chance to create the theater industry that we want there to be. So please don't waste it. And I cannot stress enough the impact that each and every one of you will have on the future of our industry. Precedents that will be set in the next few months will have long-lasting consequences that go far beyond you as an individual. And remember, you don't need to be a member of a union to show solidarity with your industry. If you're a member of a union, how has it helped you? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you're not a union member, do you think union membership is going to be part of your path in this industry? As always, I do not have a Patreon and I do not plan on making a Patreon. If this fact bums you out, please hit that like button and then give the money you would have given me to one of these awesome organizations instead. The Actors Fund, Broadway Cares, Equity Fights AIDS, or my personal favorite option, go buy a ticket to a local equity regional theater and go see some live theater because it's the absolute best way to learn. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. My name is Kent and this has been your half hour call. Do you have a question or an idea for a video? If you do, send me an email at askhalfhourcall at gmail.com. That's askhalfhourcall at gmail.com.